In this video, I'm going to talk about chemotherapy. What is it? Who gets it? What's it like to get it? How do we pick the regimens? How long does chemotherapy last? How often do you get it? And what are the general side effects? So why do we use chemotherapy in the treatment of breast cancer? We use it in two main settings. The first is in the curative treatment of breast cancer after you've had surgery or before surgery to treat cells that may have escaped the primary breast tumor in the breast and or lymph nodes. Cells may have escaped that tumor and gone to other parts of your body and we can't see them. We can scan you from the tip of your head to the bottom of your toes. We can't see cells, but there's something about that tumor that makes us worried that it's spread to, for example, your liver, your lungs, or the bone. And we want to treat you throughout your body to decrease the chance that those cells will ever come back. The other time we use chemotherapy is if we see cancer in other parts of your body and we want to treat those to suppress them or kill them. So one is in the curative setting where we're trying to decrease the chance we'll ever see it again. And then another setting is when it's already spread or we see it later down the road after you were diagnosed and it's come back in other parts of your body and we want to give you as long a life as we can with as good a quality of life as you can. The other time we'll give it is right before surgery. So again, we're giving it now to cure you, but if we give it before surgery, we can shrink that tumor and give you a little less invasive of a surgical procedure. Again, it's given for cure. All we do is switch the timing and give it to you before surgery. So we kind of get two bangs for the buck. So how do we make decisions about who needs chemotherapy? Again, this is a decision you'll make with your doctor. It won't be a decision made about you. In ductal carcinoma in situ, or non-invasive breast cancer, also called stage zero breast cancer, chemotherapy is not given. So if you've been diagnosed with ductal carcinoma in situ, DCIS, or stage zero breast cancer, chemotherapy won't be part of your treatment plan. In invasive breast cancer, stages one, two, and three, chemotherapy is often part of your treatment plan. I'll first talk about stage one breast cancer. Many patients with stage one breast cancer don't need chemotherapy, but we do take the stage of cancer quite seriously. If you have stage one breast cancer and there are features of your tumor's personality or biology we worry about, like the tumor is estrogen receptor negative or HER2 positive or high grade or has what we consider a high recurrence score on a tumor assay, chemotherapy will be part of your treatment plan as long as you're willing to go along with this. So just the stage alone doesn't mean you're going to get chemotherapy or that you won't in stage one breast cancer. In stages two and three breast cancer, chemotherapy will generally be recommended. Exceptions might be if you just have one or two lymph nodes with cancer in them and the tumor is estrogen receptor positive and has a low recurrence score on a tumor assay. Chemotherapy then might not be part of your treatment plan. In stages two and three cancer, where there are more lymph nodes involved or the estrogen receptor status is negative or the HER2 status is positive, chemotherapy most definitely will be considered strongly in your case unless you are opposed to it or if you have other medical problems that make getting chemotherapy not safe for you. Again, your doctor will go over all the reasons to get chemotherapy and maybe some of the disadvantages of chemotherapy in your case. In addition to treating cancer that may have spread, although we don't always know it, throughout your body, we can also give chemotherapy first, as I mentioned earlier. If we give chemotherapy first, it has the added advantage of shrinking the tumor. This can improve what we call your surgical outcome. It can make it more likely that we can get negative margins or a wider clean margin around the tumor. If your lymph nodes are really positive when we examine you or they're matted together or they look like there are many involved on your pictures, your ultrasound, your MRI, or your mammogram, we can shrink those down and that can make it much less invasive a procedure for the surgeon to do or more 
um, simpler for the surgeon to be able to remove those nodes and it can cause less damage to the lymphatics or the blood vessels in your armpit. It's no more surgery and it's no more chemotherapy. We're just switching the order around. So we'll give what we call preoperative chemotherapy or you might hear it called neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We can also take a tumor that otherwise couldn't be removed and make it operable. So an inoperable tumor can be made operable. Chemotherapy might need to be given for a longer period of time than it normally would, but we can make your surgery go from not removable or not surgically removable to surgically removable. There's one other instance that I want to mention. The first thing that comes to mind is inflammatory breast cancer. This is an unusual kind, but a very important type of breast cancer, and will give chemotherapy first because the cancer cells can have tracked through the skin and we can't get a good margin without giving chemotherapy first. So we'll give preoperative chemotherapy to women with inflammatory breast cancer. In advanced breast cancer, chemotherapy is generally a mainstay of therapy, if not at the beginning, at some point through your journey with breast cancer. I've just talked about a lot of complicated things. They're complicated even for breast specialists. We spend a lot of time talking about all these choices in a given individual patient. If you wanna see more about the treatment options that might be offered to you, visit yerba.com, where we'll give you information with respect to your particular tumor about what you might hear when you see the doctor. If chemotherapy is part of your treatment plan, you're probably wondering what to expect. When chemotherapy is prescribed, your doctor will get a height and weight. They just need to be precise because we use your body size to calculate your chemotherapy in most cases. Chemotherapy is generally given by vein as opposed to by mouth. When you go to the treatment center, your nurse, who's very specialized in getting a good IV, will either start an IV in your arm, which is most common, or through a port. If you have difficult veins, it's hard for people to draw your blood or to start an IV, that's when you might think about getting something called a port. There are different brand names for different ports. Not everybody needs one, and we try to avoid additional surgeries. Although this is just done under local, it does leave a long time scar. So most doctors prefer to avoid them. After the IV is started, your nurse will give you chemotherapy one of several ways. One might be through a syringe. The other might be through a small IV bag that hangs up very slowly and drips in carefully. And the other might be through a larger bag of chemotherapy that drips in over one to three hours, for example. After the chemotherapy is complete, the IV will be stopped and you'll go home. We generally recommend that you have somebody with you especially for the first treatment with any new chemotherapy drug. You don't know what to expect. We don't know how you're going to feel afterward. And the medications that we give you to help prevent any side effects, whether it be an allergy or nausea, might make you sleepy. And we don't want you driving yourself home if you're tired or drowsy. Although everybody's chemotherapy and what to expect in terms of side effects can be different and every person is different, there's some general side effects that I'd like to tell you about. Most chemotherapy given in the curative setting will cause you to have hair thinning or hair loss. This can be quite upsetting for other women, while some women don't mind this at all. It's not right for us to tell you how to feel. If you get hair thinning or hair loss, this will generally start about two weeks after your first chemotherapy. It'll happen most commonly gradually over time. You might notice the hair starting to come out in your brush or your comb or a few strands on your pillow in the morning. Eventually, most women like to just cut their hair off all at once when it starts coming out like that because it's upsetting to see a lot of hair on your pillow in the morning. At that time, you might want to wear a wig or a scarf or a shawl, something that makes you feel as good as possible. If you're a man and you're being treated for breast cancer, you might want to wear a cap. Some people also get a ponytail or some bangs that they wear under a scarf or a cap. It's up to you. Your doctor or social worker in your office can give you a pamphlet with where to get these made. Another common side effect with chemotherapy is fatigue. This is a fatigue really unlike any other. People who haven't been through chemotherapy won't know what this is like. It's really good to plan ahead. 
all those people who've been offering to help you out, this is time to call in those favors. This is time to have them do specific things for you. Fold your laundry, do your laundry, babysit. And this is a good time for you to say a gracious no. That bake sale you were gonna offer to help out for, it's not the time to volunteer. Just take really good care of yourself. I can't encourage that enough. The other side effect that you may get is that food won't taste as good. You may notice that even water has a metal taste. I found that my patients have told me putting lemon in your water, lemon on your food can be really helpful with making food taste better. You may notice your favorite foods don't taste as good and foods you didn't like before, all of a sudden you're craving. You'll see what works for you. You can always ask to meet with a nutrition specialist. This is usually covered by your insurance. And especially if you're seeing somebody at the hospital, there's usually somebody you can talk to. The last thing I wanna say about side effects that pretty much everybody experiences is you'll expect to lose weight based on what I just told you. A lot of people gain weight during breast cancer chemotherapy. So be careful not to worry about your weight. I want you to feel as good as possible as you can about yourself, but be careful not to gain a lot of weight because you think you're gonna lose it. How long will chemotherapy take? How often will it be given? And how long will you need to be seen by your doctor? Chemotherapy regimens or combinations of drugs, the frequency with which they're given, how long you're on treatment differs for every single regimen or combination. You can get more specific information at yerba.com about the regimens that might be offered as part of your treatment plan. But in general, chemotherapy is not given every day. More often it's given once a week where you're at home in between, every two weeks or every three weeks. And it generally takes between three and six months. And the choice of which regimen is given will depend on the biology or personality of your tumor and the stage. It'll also depend on whether or not you're getting trastuzumab, the targeted therapy we talked about earlier, as part of your treatment plan. Trastuzumab is given for a year and is a little different from chemotherapy. After your original chemotherapy and trastuzumab combination, trastuzumab is generally given every three weeks. If your chemotherapy is every two weeks, we try to give trastuzumab along with your chemotherapy to avoid extra visits to the treatment center. Your specific detailed information about your schedule, meaning how often you come in, and the duration, meaning how long you're on treatment, is something that your doctor and nurse will explain to you in great detail. But I think these general guidelines are helpful. If you have advanced breast cancer, meaning that your cancer has spread to other parts of your body, one of the things I take into account when recommending a treatment plan is how often the chemotherapy is given, because it's gotta fit into your life for longer. We don't treat the cancer, we treat the person. And so you should speak out with your doctor if what they recommend doesn't fit in with your life. Say, is there a treatment I can get lost often? Or is there a treatment I can get closer to home? So what's targeted therapy and how does it fit with chemotherapy? In the curative setting, these are drugs that we give along with chemotherapy that, that actually target a certain molecule on some cancer cells. And we give them the same day as we give chemotherapy, generally for a little bit longer than chemotherapy. Once you're done with chemotherapy, most targeted therapy, your hair will grow back in. That's the main distinction, and it's kind of nice to know when that will start. Another thing people ask about chemotherapy is about the financial aspects of chemotherapy. Because chemotherapy is given in a treatment center, usually by vein, insurance coverage is present for people getting chemotherapy. This will be part of your teaching and everybody in your office will be aware that this is part of your concern. Feel free to ask questions about chemotherapy and also about the medications we use to manage side effects. With chemotherapy given orally by mouth in pill form or liquid form, there can be some pre-authorization required to check with your insurance company and see what your co-payment is. Sometimes the co-payment is such that you can't afford this. Feel free to talk with your doctor about the cost to you, because this can be an added strain on you that we never want to add to the stress on your life. I've enjoyed talking with you about this and I hope it's been helpful. If you've learned from this video, click like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what else you'd like to learn about.